here. Make sure that you can hear me okay. Make sure everybody can see my screen. Yep, we're all good. Awesome, awesome. All right, so we'll go ahead and dive into today's session. So again, welcome everyone. We're going to be diving into some agent training today on Skyslope. Uh, now, a few things to note, I will be using my demo account. As mentioned, we are recording today's session, so you'll be able to get a, get a copy of what we cover here today. And because I am using a demo account, it really allows me to press all the buttons and play with all of the bells and whistles. But Radius has customized their own transaction management tool. So you'll see a lot of very familiar workflows available for you. A lot of, um, you know, that logo will be readily available there as well. So you'll feel right at home. Just note that when I move through my demo account, again, it's really so I can play with some of these mock properties. So I can step into the role as an agent, perform all of those same actions, but of course, keep everything in a nice demo environment. So to get us started here today, we'll start with our agenda. Now we are going to really dive into my demo account as if this is my first time using it. We'll cover some setup pieces. Now we do this intentionally. We want to go ahead and set up the account right the first time so that we have a lot of these available time savers. And we're taking advantage a lot of with a lot of the auto populating that the system is going to present to us. So we'll start out with Really, those getting started pieces will navigate the My Account area within the transaction management piece. And now we actually won't dive into forms today. We'll stay with the transaction management platform. We'll highlight those shortcuts for today's session, but I will highlight where you can find forms within the account. We'll talk about some additional tips and tricks. So again, we'll start with that setup, move into some of those workflow tips and tricks, some of those great time savers here before we wrap up with our available resources. So my name is Kira. I will be your tour guide here today. My next introduction is to our amazing support team. If you have any questions on what we cover here today or after today's session, you can always chat in. You can reach out and give them a call. You can shoot over an email, reply, whatever your preference. They have these guaranteed response times. I personally take advantage of that 10 second chat response. They can remote in and see your screen, which is super helpful, especially as we navigate this very remote world that we're still in. And I always like to do a quick call out to our different Skyslope products simply because this will help with the verbiage. And you'll also see these tools within my demo account. So today we're going to focus on this very first box, our all-in-one transaction management platform, really designed for peace of mind compliance. You can really think of this as your brokerage's virtual filing cabinet. So Radius invested in Skyslope in order to customize this virtual filing cabinet so that you can store all of these documents, turn them in for broker review, Make sure that we have these nice, complete, compliant files and everyone is getting paid on time. We also then ventured into the world of forms, which you may or may not have seen here so far. Uh, but of course, we do have our digital forms platform. I'll highlight that within the account. Lastly, now this is available here in California. So if you are interested, you have the option of taking advantage of Breeze. This is our guided experience for agents and sellers to complete out those disclosures. So honestly, that could be a session all in its own here. Breeze is available to you. I'll highlight as well where you can find that in a menu. And I'll also touch on when we wrap up our session where you can get some additional training if you'd like more information on Breeze. So again, this is really designed for those more complicated disclosures, things with checkboxes, text fields, really what our sellers are providing back to us. We took a page out of TurboTax's workbook there and really removed a lot of that legal jargon off of these documents so that your sellers have a much easier time completing them out, not only confidently, but quickly. So you're not seeing that, you know, one week, two week turnaround time that we often get with those multiple page documents. But enough about Breeze. We're going to dive in again to our transaction management platform here today. I'll go ahead and navigate right on over to my demo account. Again, keep in mind, I'm working in a demo account here today, and we can get started. 
All right. So actually, let's see here. I know that our screen is a little bit smaller there. So we'll go ahead and keep right here so you can see my top icons. But this will look familiar to you. You'll get logged into your transaction management tool and your dashboard will greet you with something like this. Now, very exciting. We actually have a new dashboard that is coming soon. You might have seen the ability to opt into that. Uh, so let me see if I can actually give you a little bit of a sneak peek on what that will look like. Actually, we'll save that to the end of today's training. Uh, but today, you'll log in. Your dashboard will look something like this. And up at the top, you're going to see a status of all of what's flowing through your account at this time. Now, again, we refer to this as the brokerage filing cabinet because your admin team has visibility to the files that are moving through this status bar. Now, to start with the basics, when you jump into Skyslope, we have two types of property files. So you'll hear me talk about these property file types throughout today's session. The first is going to be a listing. Now, a listing in Skyslope, this is a client coming to you saying, hey, let's put my property on the market. I'd like to see you know, what we can get for this. We're going to move forward with advertising, posting, and looking for a buyer. But at this time, I'm only working with that seller. That listing is currently active on the market. So I would start by creating that listing file, and I would be assigned the documents that are required of me for that property type. I would then find any active listings, those that are sitting on the market right here within my manage listings icon, where I would be able to continue turning in these documents really up until a offer has been accepted. Now in Skyslope, let's say you were never working with the buyer. You were only working with, or I mean, let me apologize. You were only working with the buyer. You were never working with the seller. So the first document that you prepared for this client was a purchase agreement. I'd actually start by creating a transaction. The really the main difference being is by creating a transaction, it's not asking me questions about that listing agreement simply because it's really not my business. I'm not serving as their agent. This here is going to ask me questions about this purchase agreement, about that property, those acceptance dates, which then my admin team will have access to and visibility to so that they can update their own records. And once again, everyone is getting paid on time. Now, those transactions, once that offer has been accepted, so if a listing has an offer accepted, I would then find that property here over underneath the managed transactions. So managed transactions, you can really find any property that has an assigned close of escrow date. So we'll navigate through some of these icons here today. Down at the bottom, of course, you have some additional tools, any contracts that are ever canceled. We never delete anything here in Skyslope. So it's a great thing to take away from today's session. Know that this is your virtual filing cabinet for a reason. We are going to keep all of this information safe and secure. And we're also going to store your client data in case you happen to need it later. So right away, my admin team can cancel my contracts. However, if I ever need to reactivate those contracts, you can reach out for your, to your admin team to perform that action. So just take that as really your first tip of the day here. When you go through and you're working on these property files, we know cancellations do in fact happen. But rest assured, you do not need to start over. If you are using the same client data, you can always have your admin team reactivate a contract so you can resume your progress. Otherwise, once those property files come to a close, they'll live here in your access archives. Now, this is really the key of why we refer to this as your virtual filing cabinet. That archive, there is no space limit there. And we also, again, never delete anything within Skyslope. So your archives will live there for really as long as Radius is here with a Skyslope. Now you have tasks and reminders. So this is a great tool for my to-do list people. Not something that we typically cover during training since this is a very customizable part of the platform. But we'll wrap up today's session with some resources here. So keep that in mind if you are a to-do list person. You might have a fun little action item at the end of today's session take advantage of this tool. 
All right. So we've done a little bit of our basic navigation here to get us started. You know, if you click on this icon up at the top left, you'll see the Radius logo. That will lead you right on back to this main dashboard here. So you can think of this as a home button. Quickly search for a property using this search bar here. It does not matter what status it's in. Uh, whether it is in progress, whether it is archived or canceled, you can search by a number of different fields and access to that amazing support team. So this is how we'll wrap up today's session here over in support. Now, if I click on this headset, it'll open up a new tab for me. And I even recommend as a quicker access, you can bookmark that tab for future reference. Now I'll click on my apps menu here, and this will highlight some different features available within Skyslope. So again, that if you are choosing to use Skyslope forms, that is how you'll navigate on over. If you're curious about Breeze, you have access to Breeze using that same apps menu. And if I click on my name, I'm now going to see this gear here and this my account option. So this will be our first stop in today's session. And this is where we'll get started with that basic setup. So right away, very straightforward, all of my information can be dropped here. Now, the one thing that I really wanted to highlight is this alternate email ID. So right away, if you have an assistant, a transaction coordinator, anyone in the mix who you would like to receive notifications about your property files, this is a great spot and you can toggle on this notification setting. Now we only have the one alternate email address here and the notifications that I'm referring to are going to be up at the top. We'll click into the second tab and you can toggle on the different notifications that make sense to you and your workflow. Now, the reason why I did a call out to that task and reminder feature on our main page is if you do choose to take advantage of those tasks and reminders, you can toggle on notifications that are relevant to when something is up and coming or past its due date. So everything to the left-hand side here, this is going to be automated based off of those property files and how you enter in the information when creating them. For example, I'll enter in that transaction closing date that will trigger this notification if we pass that date. Whereas the notifications on the right side, these are going to be based off of that task and reminder tool. Now you have a few other options up at the top here. You can preset your signature if you'd like to send out emails through Skyslope. Of course, you can update your password, but last but not least, let's touch on this directory tab. Right away, mine is going to be an absolute <laughs> nightmare. I should say this is chaos because I use my demo account many, many times a day. So this here, you can, of course, keep this nice and tidy, and I highly recommend it. But I just simply cannot keep up with the amount of users that come in here and work with mock information. Now the system will automatically pick up by name and email. So you'll notice that I do have some duplicates, but that is because it's pulling different information. For example, I have Miss Allie Agent. I have entered in the company that she works for is Broker Co. Whereas this one here, there is no company, but I entered in an email address. So this system here will naturally pick up contacts that you're frequently working with. It'll automatically store that here within this directory so that you can autofill as you move through. I should definitely take some time to clean up this section, uh, make it a little bit more nice and shiny for you, but I definitely recommend to check in on your directory occasionally. You can clear out any multiples that it saves for you because again, it's automatically saving this information. And you also have the option to upload multiple contacts. So if you're just getting started with Skyslope, again, this system here, I have so many because I have been at Skyslope for five years now, and <laughs> this has been my demo account since the beginning. But here, if you're just getting started, you'll go ahead, upload your multiple contacts. It'll save all of that information and nicely auto-populate as you're moving through the files. 
So great option here as you're getting started. You, of course, can also go through select any duplicates that you see using these boxes, and you can delete that contact. So you can delete in bulk. That's really nice. And you'll also notice this shared column. So if your brokerage chooses to upload contacts to their directory, they will have the option to share that across the team. So if you see this Y option here, that's just indicating that this contact has been shared by the brokerage. This N indicates that it's personal to you. So that was your uh, directory contact that was entered in and is not being shared. Now, admin have the ability to share directory, agents do not. So depending on your level there, you'll see that share option pop up. All right, so let's go ahead. We'll work our way right on back to our home base. Those are really the two options of setup that we recommend. To dive into that little My Account option here, toggle on those notifications, tag in any additional team member that should be receiving those notifications as well, and go ahead, take a look, see if there is really any of those shortcuts you can take advantage of. Back to our main dashboard, we're going to dive into a property file now and talk about some little tips and tricks that you can take advantage of as you're working through these files. So I'm going to start off by hitting create or hitting manage listings. We're going to skip a creating a property file here for today's demo, and I'm going to grab an in progress file instead. So I'm going to grab this Fifth Avenue property. And it'll bring me right on up to this first tab here within Skyslope. So one thing to note, Skyslope loves tabs. So if you're looking to see how something is organized, you could always refer to the top of the screen. Know that you can click into the alternate pages tabs up at the top. You're also going to notice you have a transaction and a listings option now up above. These are quick shortcuts that can redirect you back right on over to these sections within Skyslope without needing to return to the home page. Here within listings, once a property file is created, it'll always give you a snapshot of that key information up at the top. You're also going to see this active status as well. Now, this is directly in reference to the dates that are provided. We'll scroll right on down here. There we are. To so this listing and this expiration date. So this will remain in that active status until this expiration date has passed. So if anything changes, if you have a listing, you need to push this out a little bit longer. Maybe your client needs to hold off. They want to make some repairs, anything of that nature. Again, you can either update that expiration date, or you can also indicate up at the top if this listing needs to be withdrawn. Your preference, if you do choose to push out those contact dates, your admin team does have visibility to those changes. Or if you need to withdraw, maybe again, repost this listing at a later time. My client's going to make some repairs. Just know that you can reactivate the same data. You're not losing any progress. Also note that I have these red asterisks here. When you're creating a property file, that is indicating the information required by your brokerage. So again, if you do not have a red asterisk next to a certain field, you can feel free to skip over it. Your admin team will reach out if they do need to request any additional information. Now I'm also going to see here that I am labeled as that main listing agent. A question that we often get asked is how do I how do I incorporate any other team members if I need assistance or their visibility in the actions happening within this file? If you need to tag in any team members here, you'll first click the add option. Now a lot of times people will drop this menu down, it'll say no results found. You'll click add first to add your team member to this drop down list. Uh, so let's go ahead and say I have Miss Ciara. She is a Sacramento agent. I'm going to go ahead, save her as a co-listing agent. She is now added and available in that drop-down menu. 
Now I added Ciara because she is an agent. Again, admin, they have visibility to this information. They are really alongside helping you manage these files. Now, because Ciara happens to be an agent, I would need to add her in as a co-listing agent to see this property. I do not need to add in an admin, but any other role, I will need to add them in. So same thing, if I have a transaction coordinator who I would like to add into this workings, I would add them to this list. Or that transaction coordinator, if they created the property file, I would already be included. So a few ways that you can share this information nice and easy across those who need to be included. We have a very heavy security system here within Skyslope. So that is why you'll just manually add in any co-listing agents that will also need to be incorporated with this property file. Now over here, you'll see the type. Now we ask the type of property file and I always like to do just a quick call out to this field since this is going to directly reflect on the checklist tab within this file. So depending on the type of property that you indicate, that will determine the list of documents that Radius has created for you to turn in for broker review. So let's go ahead and scroll right on up. That contacts tab, you can also update this information at any time. But again, call out to that directory feature. If you have that directory fully loaded, you can nicely import those contacts, save yourself that time. But let's navigate right on over to our checklist. Now this property here, it's indicated as a residential listing over here in California. So my listing documentation will reflect those required documents. And now this property I have already done some work on. I can see that that listing agent or that listing agreement has been turned in for review. I can tell by that status being marked as in review and that additional paperclip. Now I do still need to submit the supplemental agency advisory which I have the ability to do so really until this property file comes to a close. So keep that in mind, that when you are working on a listing, this listing documentation checklist will carry over through the close. So all documents that are required, you have the ability to submit those in. Now, of course, you have your comment section where you can easily communicate right on over to your team and the ability to attach directly from your desktop. So you can pull documents right on over to submit them in for brokerage review. When you do so, it'll automatically save a copy here to this documents tab. And you'll also be able to turn in documents using this property specific email. Every time you create a property here within Skyslope, it'll automatically give you an email with the street name, street number at skyslope.com. So this is great. You can copy this email address. Actually, let's go ahead. We'll do just that. Let's say that my client here, I've got Mr. Scott, my client, he actually oops, went ahead and emailed me over some documents. So I would just go ahead, copy this email address. Navigate right on over to my personal dashboard here. And I'll quickly locate that email here from my client. So he's so excited to list a property with me. Scrolling on down, I have some listing documents down below. Now I'm simply going to hit forward. We'll bring that up to the front of our page here. I'm going to paste that property specific email in just like so. And I'm just going to go ahead and hit send. I'll come right on back to my Skyslope property file here. Now, if I refresh my checklist tab, let my page reload there for us, I'm actually going to see that nothing has changed. And that's very intentional. We're never submitting in documents for review. We will always drop documents directly into that documents tab. So you can think of this as your working zone. Let's click into that documents tab. Awesome. 
Now, right away, I can see that I have other documents included, but here that listing packet for today's date came right on over. So you'll notice this does not contain the email as a whole. It is simply pulling the PDFs out of the email and dropping them here within that documents tab. So this works the same as if you scan in documents. So if you have a client that prefers to meet with wet signatures, hand you over those forms, no problem. Scan them in as one big packet. Just like my listing packet is here, you can scan that in as a whole. And what you're going to do is take advantage of this split tool here within Skyslope. So let's slow down a bit. I know we're covering a lot of content. So first thing here, when we have our Skyslope property file, you can always edit these first two tabs with updating information. So that is really your role as an agent is to make sure that this property file is reflecting the correct data. The checklist tab is what the brokerage is asking of you. Radius customized this checklist so that you can dive in, turn these documents in for review. And those documents will hang out in this documents tab, really your working zone. Now, every property file will be granted an email address, which you can use to send in documents that are coming from any outside sources. If you choose to use Skyslope Forms, those documents will automatically land here in this tab. If you use any other outside forms provider or e-signature tool, those documents can either be forwarded in to this property-specific email address, or of course, you can choose to upload. So you have quite a few tools to really make this fit into your workflow here. But again, if you are bringing in these documents from outside sources, don't worry about dividing them up prior. Go ahead, drag them right on into Skyslope, knowing that you have this split tool here that you can take advantage of. So I'll bring up my split tool here. I think this is going to, okay, so I'm gonna go ahead. I'm not going to utilize that auto split and assign here today since this is just a fake packet. Uh, but right away, I know page one through 18, that is my listing agreement. But again, we've made some progress on this listing already. So I'm just going to grab that other required document. So just for today's demo, I'm going to pretend that page one through nine is this supplementary agency agreement. There we go. And page nine through the rest is going to be the acknowledgement of that seller's duty. So we'll do nine through 18 here. We'll divide this packet into two. Down at the bottom, I have the option to split. That'll go ahead and divide this packet into these two separate sections and save it to my documents tab. Or I also have the option to hit split and assign. So this is going to automatically assign those documents right on over to my checklist. Perfect. We have confirmation that work has been done. I'll go to my checklist here. We'll see how things have changed. Awesome. My two documents are already in review and scrolling down, I can now see that all of my red required documents are here. Now I can submit multiple forms to one line item. So let's say I have a revised version or maybe multiple pages, whatever the case might be. You can submit as many as you would need to to one line item. You can remove using this X if you need to again add maybe a revision or you can hover your mouse over this little paper clip here and it'll bring up a quick view of that document. So it makes it really easy just to kind of run through, scan, make sure everything is where it needs to be. And then possibly leave a quick note. Here in the comments. Anytime you leave a comment, it'll go ahead and pancake that down below, date and timestamp along with the user that left it. Because a Skype slope, it really gets that compliance name due to its ability to log. So you are effortlessly compliant because the system is going to date and timestamp everything that happens here within Skyslope. So we're going to go ahead 
navigate right on over to this log. See what all of our actions are going to look like. Awesome, so I can see this here is showing my progress. Right away, I can see that I'm assigning documents, date and time stamped out, but I'm also going to see this email that came right on over to that property specific email address. So this is actually a link. I'm gonna go ahead and click email received. And I'm going to see not only that listing packet ready to go, the original attachment, but I'm also going to be able to reference the email body from my client. So this is great if you would like to track the conversations that you're having with your clients. Now you can BCC this email address, but I don't necessarily recommend uh, a lot of time or CC as well. A lot of times clients, they don't recognize the email address, so they don't include it in responses. So what we recommend is once that email thread is coming to a close, you know that's wrapping up then go ahead, forward the email as a whole to that property specific address. So you can track that conversation nicely here within that link. We've got all that conversation ready to go, along with once again, date and time stamped. I can then see here that I added documents to my property file here, and I even left a checklist note. Now, as an agent, if you're reaching out and you're calling a client over and over again, calling a listing agent, whatever the case might be, you also have the ability to enter in a note, send over an email, or email the log as a whole. So you have a lot of options here. This is really designed to keep you safe. And the last tab here within my space so property file is my task tab. So this is another call out. If you do choose to take advantage of our task and reminder tool, you have the ability to either assign tasks to individuals or to yourself. So if you're working on this property file here, remember I added Ciara as a listing agent that is also working on this file. So I would be able to jump right on over into tasks. Let's say I would like to assign something to her. I could always click new task here. Enter in whatever that task might be. So for feedback, something along those lines. So we'll do, let's do after closing date. Let's go ahead and do five days after closing date. I would like, let's say Ciara here to give them a call. I would be able to go ahead and hit save. And this task has now been added. So here it'll automatically shoot this on over to Ciara, letting her know that she's been assigned this task. And if she has her notifications toggled on, it'll give her a notification here as a daily summary that this is up and coming five days after this is set to close. So nice little overview there of that task feature. Again, you can assign individual tasks through this property file directly, and you can assign this either to yourself or to others that are associated with this property. And you can also set up task templates. So you'll notice this import template option that is going to be available through your home icon. You can create templates. Let's say you always do, you know, the same round of tasks. I uh, reach out to the company to order some open house signs. I post on social media. We run our open. shortcuts that you have available here within this property file that we'll touch on. Now here I have the ability to download files. So if I would like to go ahead and select these documents, I have the option to download these either individually or all at once. You can also select a handful. 
Now, if you would like to share these documents out, but you do not want to share them as individual PDFs like that, you have the ability to click this share docs option and create a bundle. So I'm just going to go ahead and call this fifth ad bundle and I'm going to hit create. Now, what this does is it generates a nice link for us. I'm going to go ahead and copy this link. Open up a new tab and paste that up above. Now, what this new link is going to do first is going to display my contact information on the left. We have that property address along with my agent information. I right here now can access all of these documents and whoever is utilizing this link has the option to download them to the local drive. This as a download all option or they can do this as a one by one. So the reason why you might prefer to share these documents using a bundle is it gives you a little bit more control. First, they have the ability here to access these PDFs in one secured location. So you're not sharing these documents individually across multiple platforms. They now have the ability to save this to their local drive and move on. <laughs> and you have full visibility to who is accessing this link. So here I'll go ahead and close. I'll navigate right on back to the log. And I'm going to see here that not only did I create this bundle, but I can also see who viewed it. So this is going to date and timestamp when this link is accessed. Now you'll notice I did not need to provide any credentials here to access that link. It's simply recognizing that I created it. However, anyone else receiving that link, it will ask them for their email address. So then it'll show you here within this comment section, it'll provide their email address and their first name to show you who is viewing these bundles. You can post them on the MLS, you can post them on social media, wherever you choose. And know that these documents are safe simply because when we navigate back to that documents tab, I can now see that I have my documents list. I also have a shared bundles tab. When I click on shared bundles, it'll give me the ability to deactivate. So again, your preference, either you can choose to grab these documents, you can email them out directly through that tab. You can email them by download them, downloading them to your local drive and adding them to any other email. Or you can choose to share via link, creating these bundles here, which gives you the ability not only to track who is really accessing that information, but it also gives you the ability to deactivate that link at any time. Anyone who has that link will no longer be able to go in and grab any of those PDFs any longer. That link will just say no longer active. We'll go ahead and do just that. We like to keep all of our information nice and safe here. You'll notice the ability to reactivate at any time. So it gives a lot of control of who is accessing and how you're sharing this information. Ooh, all right, guys, so we have been heavily working within this listing file. I'm going to go ahead, use my transactions shortcut, click right on over, and we are going to just take a quick look into an active transaction. So here I can see that the status is registered as pending, and I'm also going to see these incomplete items. So that is a great way to really track and manage your really property files that need the most love. Pay attention to those incomplete items and how qu quickly that closing date is approaching. So I'll click right in to this property here and you'll notice same formatting, transactions, contacts. Now you have the additional commissions page. Let's hop right on over into this checklist. Just to do again a quick callback to the way that this property file is going to move through the system. If I scroll right on down, let's see here, I'll see that I have listing documentation down below. 
So if your listing has an offer accepted, it'll carry that same checklist. We're just going to stack the sales documents right on top. So I can continue making progress on those listing documents while I am also putting a dent in that sales documentation. Now again, keep in mind, I'm using a demo account here today. So your checklists will reflect the documents that you are used to turning in. Radius made sure of that by customizing them. Here within my property file, I'm also going to notice that instead of withdraw listing, it now gives me the option to download a summary or cancel that transaction. So one thing I wanted to touch on here within a transaction file if this property was once a listing, if I originally was working with this listing here and I indicated an offer was accepted, however, for some reason that offer fell through. I do not need to start from scratch. I can come right on up here and I can hit cancel transaction. Now this is going to now ask me two things, my reasons for canceling and if it would like to reactivate the original listing. So another great time saver built in to Skyslope. So I, of course, will let my admin team know what the reason for cancellation is. And then I can decide if I would like to reactivate that listing. It'll keep all of my seller's information handy, and it would just simply clear out any buyer information that I had filled out. Always leave a reason for cancellation because your admin team will, will approve that for you or reject that cancellation. And also be sure to turn in any cancellation documents before indicating that this change is to be made. Now, you will still be able to upload those cancellation documents. Moving back into my transaction tab. I'm going to notice that this is divided up between active transactions and transactions canceled pending approval. So once you indicate that a transaction is to be canceled, it will hang out in this section here until that cancellation documents have been turned in for review. So keep an eye on that. If you're noticing that your cancellation has not been approved, most likely it is become, it's because you have an incomplete item that the brokerage is going to request before they approve it. Now you also have a subsection down at the bottom. And this will really be our last feature here that we touch on before we wrap up today's session with some available resources. But this closed transactions to be archived, I kind of like to pair this with some ominous music in the background. And it's just simply indicating that there are some incomplete items left before your admin team is going to approve this closed doctor transaction. So right away, you can see that I have some closing dates that have been long gone, but these have not been successfully closed out because they still have these incomplete items. So my admin team can place properties in what we kind of refer to as file jail, really just giving them those vibrant sticky notes on the front of that manila folder with a few documents jotted down that we are still waiting on. So these are still active files. You can dive right in, turn things in for review still when it's in this status. It is not until that property file is fully archived that it is no longer accepting changes. So these two sections here, keep an eye on them. You know, if you have these canceled transactions pending approval, make sure you're turning in the correct documentation here. And if you're waiting for your property files to close, make sure that you're getting paid on time. Turn in all of those required forms to ensure that your admin team can close out these files when that date comes around. All right, so we'll go ahead. Actually, you know what? Let's highlight this one incomplete status. Now, one thing to note, when you are converting a listing file over into a transaction, you are indicating that that offer has been accepted and we are moving forward. The system will ask you questions about your buyer. Now, if you are unable to answer some of those red required fields, it'll mark it in this incomplete status. 
you can still proceed. It just lets you know that right here, my brokerage needs more information before this is going to be considered a fully running transaction file. So if you see that incomplete status for any reason, double check those red asterisks. Make sure you've provided your uh, brokerage with all the information that they need in order to start processing that change. And of course, if you see this expired status for any reason, that is indicating that your close date or your acceptance dates have passed. And you'll need to go ahead, update those dates. So the status will return back to that pending. So just a little file maintenance there for you as you advance using Skyslope. These are just things that will come naturally with the changes that happen within these property files. So just keep those notes handy and you'll have this nice pending status and you'll be completing out all of your items prior to that close date. Let's go ahead and round out today's session here back on our home screen. We had a chance to dive into our listings and our transactions. Now this incomplete checklist icon here, this really brings all of your property files that are coming to a close up front so that you can see who has what incomplete items left. So this is really just a nice way to kind of prioritize what needs documents right now. <laughs> of course, you have your canceled contracts where that data will live and your archives where all of those closed property files will stay. Now, again, the only difference between an archived file and an active file is any documents turned in will no longer be subject to brokerage review. So let's say I find a staging receipt in my pocket months later, but it is something that I'd like to upload to that documents tab just to keep it safe. I'd be able to find that property here within my archives, type in that address, upload that staging receipt for safekeeping. My admin team will not receive any notifications since this property file has passed that close date. As I mentioned, tasks and reminders during today's training, this could be a session in itself, but you can set up those templates using this home icon here. And last but not least, working documents. This is a great storage space. So if you are looking for a Dropbox of sorts, or maybe just looking to store uh, documents that are not relevant to a property file, great storage space just to keep everything housed here within your Skyslope account. All right, guys, so let's go ahead, click on this little icon here, this support icon. We'll bring that up. Now, right away, I recommend you can always bookmark this page just as I have it bookmarked here because this is going to give you access to really all of our training resources. I'll scroll right on down. You can explore our different training offerings. But what I like to highlight here is the ability to browse by product. So today's session, if you would like to break down today's training into smaller bites, everything that we covered will be under this very first tile here, Skyslope. Now, if you do choose to use Skyslope forms, we've got some tips and tricks for you here. And if you're curious to learn more about Breeze, it is available for all of our California users. You can dive right in. I hope you like the sound of my voice. I can promise you all of our brief training materials I filmed myself. And of course, as we scroll right on down, you have those response times. So you can easily chat in with support. Again, this is my personal preference since this is going to allow them to remote in, see your screen, walk you through anything very hands-on. Also, if I scroll on down, you'll note that we're always requesting feedback. Now, we build out everything that has to do with Skyslope here based off of our agents and our users. So we love all and any feedback. But once you get your feet wet and you're moving through the platform, let us know if there's any feature that you would find of value or maybe something that you've used in the past that you think you would like to see incorporated within your Skyslope workflow. Also, easy way to send over an email to support if that is your preferred reach out here and their phone number will be down at the bottom of our screen. 
So let's see if I can hang out right here a little bit in the middle. So again, let us know your feedback. We love it. Send us over an email, reach out, give us a call, or you can also, of course, choose to chat. Thank you so much, Kira. And thank you so much to our wonderful partners over at Sky Slope for putting together this incredible session. Um, we appreciate you and all that you do. And so thank you so much for joining us today, everyone. Um, and I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your Tuesday. Yeah, thank you so much for having us. Let us know if you have any questions, guys. We appreciate you being here. Absolutely. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a wonderful rest of your day.